So welcome to Whippoorwill Holler. I'm Miss Lori and this is Mr. Brown. We live in the hills of Arkansas. We love the Lord. Keepers of the old way, but accept some of the new. We love to cook and we love to eat. We love to garden. It's in our blood. It's how we stay sustainable and fill our pantry. We do a lot of canning and preserving. We live a sustainable life. We love our family. We work hard. And every once in a while, we like to dance. So y'all join us. How y'all are? That's what Justin Wilson would have said. You got Paul back in the kitchen again. Tonight, I'm cooking supper. It's 110 degrees outside. Let me tell you, it's hot. When I left my shop while ago, it was 92 to, well, it might have been 94 by the time I left while ago inside the shop. Anyway, it's been a hot day, but I'm gonna cook some supper tonight for Miss Lori. And we know that <clears throat> times have been hard and we got history of times being hard in the past we're hoping they don't head that way now but it, it's a possibility and, and we need to get prepared as, as best as we can everybody can't be as prepared as say miss or and i are or you live in the city and such but tonight we're having an old-fashioned what i would call old-fashioned supper uh, this is what i grew up eating a lot especially in the fall of the year and in spring when you could we'd get a hold of them young squirrels and that's what I've got today is a young squirrel and it was a sustainable type meal when I grow up we <clears throat> lived off a of wild game a lot now we had cattle I'm putting some lard and I'm gonna get my grease going putting some lard here in my skillet get her turned on let her start heating up now when I grew up I had a lot of wild meat I was hunting when I was probably 10 year old maybe younger I mean I was I may have somebody with me when I was younger but when I was around 10 I was going out and bringing home game and my dad worked on the tow boats for many, many years, for about 28 years on the Mississippi River. And when he was home, he hunted a lot. And my brother, my older brother, who's about 10 years older than me, hunted a lot. He also worked on the river for a while too. And when they'd come home, they'd have a month home and we would get caught up on cutting wood and and certain farm chores and I, I'd take care of the farm chores you know when they were gone and uh, and my dad and brother loved to quail hunt and they done that a lot and I ate a lot, we ate a lot of quail and nowadays there's very few quail to be found in this country but squirrels was one of the staples and deer and I've ate everything from groundhog the coon i've never eaten no possum and i really don't plan on it but if i got hungry enough i could do it i've cleaned a many of them and sold their fur so what i've got here is some flour and i've got a little bit of <clears throat> justin wilson seasoning we wouldn't have had that back in the day but I'm going to put a little bit on there. Most all we used was salt and pepper. and uh, But I'm going to put some on this squirrel tonight. This squirrel's been soaking in the refrigerator for a few days. So 
So the squirrel had been soaking for, I think I said earlier, several days. And you can do that in the refrigerator. If it's an older squirrel, it would tenderize it up. This is really a young squirrel. It didn't really have to be, but if you don't like the gamey flavor and wild game, then that would also pull some of the game flavor out of it. And I happen to like that flavor, but it's okay. So I've put some Justin Wilson regular seasoned, back in the day, seasoning, back in the day, all we would have done was salt and pepper it. Put some salt and pepper on both sides of it, and I've done done the other side. First thing I done was I took this squirrel and I took a paper towel and I patted it dry. I've just got some all-purpose flour. Get this grease warmed up again. We had real life happening. For some reason, the washing machine has started gurgling in the front sink occasionally. And that's what was going on. So we had to take a little break. I hope I'm not getting something stopped up. Seems to drain fine, but we'll see. I guess time will tell. So we'll let this grease. It's starting to get warmed up. You can see you can take that little dab of flour and you can drop it in there and it starts bubbling that, cooking that flour. It's starting to warm up. I'm going to go ahead and dip this squirrel in this flour. If you, uh, you can do an egg batter if you wanted to. You could do a breadcrumb batter if you wanted to. Uh, I'm just fixing it like we always did when I was young. And uh, my kids, my goodness, I don't know what we'd have done at times. We probably would have done without a lot more if it hadn't been for wild game. Fish and wild game fed my kids when Laura and I were young for many years. Matter of fact, I've ate so much of it that squirrel and stuff, I haven't had none in a while. I cut that young squirrel up. Uh, he ain't very big, so I left his, his back legs, I left them together. I separated his front legs, cut his rib cage out, and it's got his back. My favorite part is his back. One of my most favorite parts is the tenderloin down that back. And the front legs are good. Now we used to, we, we would, if we had an old squirrel or something, uh, you might let them soak a little longer or sometimes we would saute them, we'd fry them up, then saute them with uh, some like mushroom gravy or something like that. This flour and this squirrel real good. I'm gonna drop her down in there and let her fry up like you was frying up chicken. Up, and we'll be back in a few minutes. Been frying not very long. My grease is pretty hot. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it. Put a lid on it, let it steam in there a little bit. So I turned the squirrel, I turned it on its side, moved it to another burner because this burner was getting a little bit hot. I for sure want to get it cooked. Uh, I'm going to tell you a story. My mother and dad were hunting one time together. And dad was going to let mom shoot the squirrel out of the tree. And <laughs> so I don't know, 
I know some of you have hunted squirrels, a lot of you have. Maybe some of you never had the opportunity, but <clears throat> that sink's talking to us again. <laughs> uh, so, most of the time when a squirrel goes up a tree, if there's just one person, whenever you move around, whatever you do, move, a squirrel's going to go to the opposite side of the tree. He's going to hide from you the whole time. He's harder to see. So dad gives mom the gun and he walks around up a ways to turn the squirrel to make the squirrel come around so mom could shoot it. So the squirrel comes around and mom shoots a couple of times and not hitting it. But dad said he noticed he heard a thunk around him pretty close. And she shot again, he heard it again after I had the shot. So what was happening was where she was shooting at that squirrel, it was causing that bullet to come over the tree, and the bullet was hitting out there beside of him. So he decided, you know, you gotta be careful, that's not a very good idea. I'm sure she was probably shooting a 22, but nevertheless. So moral of the story is. <laughs> moral of the story is don't be on the opposite side of the tree when somebody's <laughs> shooting at a squirrel. Shotgun probably would have been fine, but the 22, Everywhere she was shooting that was turning that bullet down toward the ground. <laughs> and he told that story a thousand times. The squirrel's really looking good, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So you want to cook that on what, like a medium low heat? Medium low. Let it. What is that, the back? That is the back. I'm going to hold her down there in a second. That's the back side. Hold her down, let her cook down in there. It's wanting a rainbow up on me. You know, your youngest daughter, how was she, when she'd hold them squirrels for you, for you to skin them. We got pictures of her. She wasn't no older than five, three. six year old, was she? Is that old? I don't even think she was that old. I think she, she was about very four. Old. I can remember we got a picture of her in her little yellow dress helping me hold squirrels and she'd hold their she'd hold the little legs part so you could skin them down there. <laughs> Didn't bother her she's a, the, the, my younger girl and she's become a hunter and she still hunts. She bow hunts for deer and and rifle hunts and she still squirrel hunts occasionally and she become the hunter of the girls. Of course, she couldn't hold that squirrel very much. I, y'all, I, there, there's no telling how many squirrels that I helped my dad clean, hold them squirrels while he cleaned them instead of him tying them up on water or string or whatever. I would have to hold them. And of course, I wasn't very big, and he could pull me an old, an old big tough squirrel and kind of pull the hide off of it. He, it was hard for me to hold, but I learned how to do it. And one of the best eating squirrels there is is a fox squirrel, a young fox squirrel that has a lot of meat on it. I know everybody's not going to have access to squirrels, but some of you will have. And I'm sure there's a lot of you that remember eating wild game. And... Uh, I haven't had squirrel in a while. I ate it so many years, I got where I didn't hunt it and, and uh, eat as much squirrel, but I sure could eat it again. And I, I've missed it some. This is going to be good right here, I can promise you that. Squirrel simmer underneath this cover, probably a total of about five minutes. And I'm going to turn the heat up just a little bit. We're going to warm her back up and uh, get her hot. And I'm going to crisp that squirrel up one last time. It's probably basically done. And uh, you know, it looks pretty, don't it? Yeah. Pretty. Does it look pretty? It looks pretty. It's pretty. Looks good. So I turned that grease back up and got it pretty hot. And I rebrowned that squirrel. 
You know, I even actually, when I'm cooking, I'll take that squirrel and set it up maybe against another piece like that and brown the sides of it like I like to do a pork. So it's ready. And I'm going to put it here on paper towel and let it drain off. You know, it's a pretty funny story that my dad used to fuss at me if I shot a squirrel in the head. And the reason being is that my dad and brother ate squirrel brains. So, now I've ate them, or I have eaten them, and I've ate squirrel tongue. I've eaten squirrel tongue. But they used to take the whole head, and mom would fry it up just like that right there. Skin that plum off, and the whole head, and the tongue will still be there, and the brain. Now, I never was that big a fan of it. But I can still, I can sit right here and remember my dad and brother eating them left and right, and it sounded like, uh, like if you were sucking that goodness out of a crawdad. They'd suck that brain out of that squirrel and <laughs> eat it. You know, you're really... Oh, I'm probably <laughs> grossing people out, aren't I? Yeah, but they ate, didn't they? They ate. They liked it. If I was real hungry, you did too. I would eat it again. But I never was that big a fan of it. So, we're fixing to make some water gravy out of the goodness in that skillet right there. I'm probably going to drain a little bit of the grease off. Uh... Instead of milk gravy, we're going to have water gravy tonight. With all them giblets and goods in there, it's going to be some good stuff. And we're going to make some homemade biscuits. So this is going to cool down just a little bit, and I'm going to drain it off. And we're fixing to start making some gravy. So we're going to fix and make some biscuits. And I'm taking a little bit of this lard and... Putting it, greasing my biscuit pan. And I may even put a little bit on top of it here in a minute. On top of the biscuit. That stuff's hot. I can't put my, can't put my hand on it. It's really hot right now. We're going to smear that around on the bottom of that biscuit pan. So we're fixing to make a two ingredient biscuit. Now if you didn't have cream, you could use water. It's like we're gonna make water gravy. We're gonna show you how to make water gravy. If Which, you if you didn't have those ingredients. Yeah, you'd still have to use lard too. You'd have to have lard and water. Um, yes. Your, your cream is your fat. So That's yes. your fat, so you could use lard, yes. Yes. With water. Uh and then that would be a three ingredient, right? Well, this, <laughs> this is actually... <laughs> so, yeah. way back in the day, they didn't have self-rising flour. But, it's easy to make self-rising flour. Now, when I was a kid, they had self-rising. I don't know what year self-rising flour started coming about. But you can take your all-purpose flour, take a cup of flour, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, and a quarter teaspoon of salt and stir it up and you've got self-rising flour. And that's what we're going to do, that's what we've done, and we're going to have biscuits. Now, I don't know exactly, this is a cup of flour in here, so I don't know exactly how much this cream it's going to take. Now we usually had milk or cream when I was growing up because we had a milk cow. Uh, but if you didn't, and it's like we've got saved up, we've got some powdered milk saved up. So my wife's got a video on making these biscuits, and she can probably do it a lot better than I can. Now I like flat biscuits, so I'm, I patted that out a little flatter. She likes fluffy biscuits, so we'll do a few of them a little more fluffy. I put just a little bit of uh, 
uh, grease or a little bit of lard on my hands to help this. Now this, the consistency of this is just, it's just tacky. It's kind of soft and tacky and you don't want to work it too much. And they're not going to be nothing pretty about them. They're just going to be a biscuit. Uh, we'll have we'll have plenty here for Laura and I. I'll leave some of them just a little fluffier, maybe, so that you can have them. You like them cat head biscuits? Well, no, no, I don't want mine real. I really don't like them too fluffy, but I know that I've had a lot of comments on the two ingredient uh, biscuits because there's a lot of people that had trouble making regular biscuits and they make these and they turn out good every time and you know it's just self rising flour and uh, we're gonna have a couple heavy of cream and there's really no measurement I mean. What we had there was a cup of the, uh, of course we made our own self-rising flour, and uh, then just enough cream to bring it together, which ended up, I think, being about two-thirds cup, and it's going to differ every time. And this right here, you know, a cup of flour made that many biscuits. Got so, one little one. <laughs> that's mine. And we're going to put these in a, a heated... Uh, 400 degree oven because you want to cook biscuits in a in a hot oven and it's out on the porch tonight and we don't want to heat up the house yeah we're cooking in the, the biscuits out on the outdoor kitchen out in the outdoor kitchen so it's heating up right now so you got the biscuits done biscuits are done we're fixing to make some gravy that's right so what I like to do I had a little bit of lard on my hand but I like to take a little bit of these brown drippings off this squirrel and put just a little bit top of them biscuits and that should help them biscuits brown on top. So the biscuits are done. Just like I like them. They do look good. They're just the right size. And they smell good. They're the right size. And if you want them a little thicker, if you like thicker biscuits, you can make I mean, you can make more biscuits. You could put more flour in there, whatever. You can make them a little thicker. That's the way I like them. So we're fixing to make our water gravy. So I got all this squirrel frying bits and giblets all in here. And we're going to add some flour. Now, I did not drain no oil out. I didn't have a whole lot of oil on this. And we're, what we're going to do, we're just going to put just enough out flour in there to get it thick. I'll turn this down just a little bit for a second. It is on low in it. You probably had, what, a fourth of a cup of grease still in there from prime squirrel and about a fourth of a cup of flour, didn't you? Yeah, something like that. It's, I'm basically just putting enough flour to get that flour roux, I would call it, looking like I want it to look kind of thick, but you don't want it clumpy. You want it to cook just a little bit. Still gonna need just a little bit more in there. It might be enough in the all in there, I reckon. It's starting to get there. Well. You know, you're not gonna get any more of a frugal meal than this is. This meal did not cost hardly anything to make, you know. It. No. Plus the fact that you're gonna be using, making water gravy. Oh. Uh, we'll end up using them for almost four cups. So. As long as you've got flour and you've got uh, a little bit of baking powder, salt, even if you had to use lard 
and a little bit of water to make your biscuits, there's no reason that you can't eat a decent supper if that's all you got. That's all you've got. Or if you're trying We to did not run to the store every week, I can promise you, when I was growing up. And we didn't, what'd you do? You try to do a once a month thing, kind of whenever we were raising our kids. Okay. Now this is going to be a dark looking gravy with all that squirrel giblets in it and we're going to let that cook just a little bit and then we're going to Add some water to it and see how she goes. See if we can get her thickened. I think it's brown now. So we've let this brown and let this flour cook a little bit. That flour cooks up, it'll help your gravy thicken. You want it cooking, and you can see that it's a bubbling in there. That flour is a bubbling with that, with that lard. And you want to continuously stir as you're adding that water. I just made a mess, didn't I? You can see how thick that's getting. I had plenty of flour in there, I assure you. You want to keep stirring that. And that's one thing about it, you can always thin it up. You don't want to burn it. I got it pretty hot. We're going to see what that looks like right here. Just look at the consistency of it. I had quite a bit of flour. I had quite a bit of uh, lard in there and I put quite a bit of flour so it's not going to take much to thicken up. Now I don't like real thick gravy. I don't like it real runny. Boy that looks like good old what I would call sawmill, sawmill gravy ain't it? Put just a little more in there. That ought to be about right. We're going to put just a little bit of salt in there. You can always taste it and get it to taste. We're going to put a little bit of black pepper in there. Can't have gravy without black pepper. Now, of course, you know, anybody would rather have gravy made with milk. But, you know, you may not have milk. There may be a point that, you know, that's why we keep powdered milk stored in our pantry for hard times. But uh, there were many times back in the Depression era and back in there that people couldn't get, um, you know, you didn't have a milk cow. And of course, the milk cow didn't always, wasn't always given milk. Um, well, this was a hot meal that you could serve. In, uh, and water, if you had got water, you can make you some gravy. All right, I'm going to turn that off. Looking pretty good, ain't it? Yep. I'm, I'm this, really hungry. I'm going to put a little more salt in there. Now, my wife's not a big squirrel eater. <laughs> she used to just cook, I mean, cooked a bunch of it. But she's not a big squirrel eater. Well. You would if you needed to. Yeah. You're going to eat a piece. And I ate my share of it, that's for sure, but. Uh, no, I'm not a big squirrel, but if I had to, yes, sir, I would. I know that. I sat there and ate it with my children many times because that's what we had. But I tell you what you know, I do. I tell you what I do love. Rabbit. Biscuits and gravy. <laughs> <laughs> you like rabbit too? Yeah, I do. I like tame rabbit. Tame rabbit. I've ate a many a wild rabbit, and I have ate several tame rabbits. Well, that looks pretty good, don't it? Yeah, it does. I'm ready to eat. Biscuits are done, squirrels done, and we're going to put some of this on a plate and see what it tastes like. The water gravy is really good. Isn't it? The biscuits are good. Had that fried squirrel giblets in that gravy. Yeah. Biscuits are good. I know that was a young squirrel, but. <clears throat> tender, ain't it? It is tender. Falls off the bone. 
keep it in the refrigerator several days. Now I did change the water one time. I put some salt in the water and I changed it one time and you keep it good and cold in the refrigerator I mean you don't you don't have to worry about it it'll, it'll keep several days you have a napkin behind you okay. I got me some uh, homemade marmalade orange marmalade on one of your biscuits that'll be my dessert yeah, I thought I'd have some of that too. You know, our friend Michelle that came and seen me at the beach. Yes. She's been really tormenting me the last couple of days. What she been doing to you? Well, she's making all these desserts and stuff, and uh, I ain't getting none of them. Then she <laughs> sent she sent me a picture this morning of the prettiest upside pineapple upside down cake. Well. And she's like, na 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 na. <laughs> Told her she's <laughs> killing me. <laughs> so guess what, Michelle? I'm eating some marmalade on a homemade biscuit. But you know, we wanted, of course this is the way we eat a lot anyways, but we just wanted people to know that, you know, there's hard times has been around since the beginning of time. We realize that Everybody ain't going to have access to wild game. No. Especially when you live in town. But, it don't have to be wild game. And I promise you, there have been many a meal that I sat down and ate biscuits and gravy. And that was it. And that was it. Now then, when the potatoes come off and we'd have some fried potatoes with that gravy and biscuit, that's good stuff too. Of course, you always had eggs and you always had beans. Always had eggs, always had beans. I've, I've never done without a meal. I mean, when I was growing up, there's always something on the table to eat. Now, I mean, I well, we weren't <laughs> we wasn't picky eaters. We ate what was put down. In front and your of mama us. was a very good cook, but so was my grandmother. But we didn't have stuff like box macaroni and cheese and and all that stuff and so we didn't really know the difference thinking that you know we're going to starve to death because we had everything canned in the pantry and everything else we had no reason to ever think that we was poor or that we was doing without but in at some point you know that's just the way you survived and you ate sustainable food. I don't know how else to put it. Let me tell you something, that back's good. <laughs> that's my favorite piece. I hope y'all have enjoyed watching Mr. Brown cook again. Because I know I did and I know I'm enjoying eating it. I'm just no hillbilly cook. But, you know, we got to get out there and show people that you can, you can survive on what little you have at some point. The biggest thing is... That <clears throat> you have to be prepared. The biggest thing is be prepared as much as you possibly can. And If that's just a few canned goods extra, don't buy nothing that you normally wouldn't eat. Buy what you would eat. If you don't need it, then you can, you know, if you don't need it desperately or whatever, you can always eat it as time goes on. Don't ever think that you can't have biscuits and gravy because you don't have milk. Right. Or, you know. Um, Some people's pretty in intimidated about making gravy. And I, if I can make gravy, anybody can make <laughs> gravy. And he makes really good gravy, y'all. I just, I'm just going to admit to it. He does. And it may be better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest thing is is don't give up trying to make it. It don't call if you if you mess up. Biggest thing is stirring it. You don't want it. You want it hot. You want that flour and stuff to be uh, boiling and, and and you want it to cook a little bit and it'll thicken better. You see how fast it thickened. I had I had quite a bit of gravy. I mean flour in there and it thickened fast. And matter of fact, I had to thin it up. But uh, 
if at first you don't succeed, try try again because it, it, it can be done. It's not it's not hard. You'll learn that you can look at it and it ain't long. You you don't even have to really measure anything. You just I don't really measure. I just look at it by anyway. But you know my grandmother. She hand made biscuits every. She may not have on Sunday morning, but I know six days a week she'd make my grandpa. She had a wooden bowl and she had that flour and she usually made buttermilk biscuits and she our milk and she would pour that on top of that flour and, and she had done it all by feel and she'd have biscuits and she took a I never will forget I took a like a bean can or something and that's what she cut her biscuits out with. And she'd have biscuits thrown together pretty quick, but mm -hmm. every day. That, that reminds, I thought I told this story. That reminds, we were actually eating rabbit or squirrel. I think it was probably squirrel at, at my grandma and grand. I spent a lot of time during the summertime and certain times over there when I wasn't in school. But I can remember him sitting there eating, and he, you know, of course, he likes salt, and he's sitting there putting that salt on there. And I know I've told this story, but I never will forget it. And he said, the more salt I put on there, the sweeter it gets. And I don't know. I don't know how the sugar was getting to the salt shaker or what, or what it was, but he was putting sugar. <laughs> Putting sugar on that squirrel instead of salt. Accidentally put sugar in the salt shaker. Yeah, I know sugar's pretty thick because the salt shaker then was probably. They had, yeah, usually big holes. Bigger holes. Been, I remember you telling that story. I never will forget it. I, <laughs> I can sit there. Yet. I can sit there and just see him doing it. I was sitting there watching him, and uh, I remember him plowing the garden with a with a jack. And, I had to go get me some more gravy. That's good stuff, ain't it? There's no way that squirrel could be any more tender than what it is. I know it. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I know we're enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> We've had some really dry, hot weather here, and I know a lot of y'all have. And I didn't even see any rain in the forecast for a while. Have you? I haven't seen none. I'm fixing to go out and do a little bit more watering, and we got several different gardens, so we had to kind of rotate keeping them watered. But <clears throat> everything's doing pretty good, as long as they don't start getting too stressed over all this heat and no rain. But the only thing would have been any better is tomato out of the garden. Oh we yeah, tomato and gravy. <laughs> And that's coming soon. We've only gotten, you know, our garden come out pretty late, and we have got tomatoes coming on, but they're still green. We had a, how many have we ate? Two? Maybe, yeah. Two out of the garden that did ripen, so we didn't have any for supper tonight. But, you know, you get to thinking about it. You really do pretty good in this country if you get ripe tomatoes before the 4th. Before the 4th of July. That's what they always say here. If you get tomatoes by the 4th of July very many then you've done good because we have to fight the frost early and and things just don't grow till the ground temperature gets right anyway did you notice some volunteer potatoes coming up out there in the beans no there's some potatoes that i planted potatoes there last year and there's some little ones i didn't get they're out there coming up <laughs> um if y'all watched a couple videos ago, I was showing y'all how we use our fish emulsion, and that's what we use fertilizer. And fish emulsion also helps put on a lot of blooms, and my green beans have got a lot of blooms, so I'm hoping... She's going to have to get her bean picking <laughs> britches on. So I'm hoping I get a bunch of green beans this year, because last year was a total flop. It was a flop, wasn't it? It was, and the ones I got... I almost think they they put the wrong beans in the wrong packages. 
Because I've even had other people tell me the same thing happened to them. It was supposed to be bush beans, contenders, and they ended up being pole beans and stringy. They were stringy. Very stringy, and we don't like stringy green beans. I don't. But anyways. If it's got them old tough strings in it, <laughs> I, I'm out. And you can take them, you know, when you're snapping, you, but that's a lot of work. But anyways, I hope everybody's garden's doing good. I have seen some gardens, people sending me pictures, and they look really good. So it don't matter if you're growing a big garden, a medium garden, or just a container, a little bitty. It don't matter. Just grow you something. And uh, just something to, to keep your belly full. Oh, we enjoyed some greens all winter. Woo! Yeah, and I still got some. And I put some in the freezer, and I'm fixing to have to pick some more. And I think I'm going to can them. Uh, I do have a video way back, probably last summer, I guess, uh, canning greens. It does work, and they tasted really good coming out of them jars. Um, <clears throat> it, it done a real good job. But I was so busy before we went to the beach trying to get stuff done, I had to put it in the freezer. So, I put them in, uh, I blanched them just for about three minutes, and then I drained them and um, vacuum packed them and sealed them in bags and put them in the freezer. So, anytime we need kale or for any reason, but this batch I'm going to can. So, I guess we need to let them go. <clears throat> we've probably yammered enough. We? I think we've yammered enough. Um... Uh, but y'all seen how Mr. Brown cooks up his squirrel, and he's going to be doing some more cooking, too. And he's going to be doing some fishing, but it's really getting hot weather to be fishing. My fishing, I didn't get to do a lot this spring. I'm telling you, it just went from being too cold to hot. river was always up. It, it was we raining. had a lot of rain then, yeah. It was raining. Muddy. My fishing thing, I didn't get to do a lot, but you know what? I'm not complaining. No. No. We have a surprise to show them that we ain't showed them yet. Oh. Don't tell them. You talking about the thing out there? Yeah. <laughs> Should we show a picture of it at the end of this video? Well, maybe. Maybe? Yeah, it'll be all right. Okay. So, stay tuned for the end of the video because we're going to give you a little shot. I actually at... sent a picture of it to Debbie down there in Texas. <gasps> You gotta quit cheating. I sent her a picture. I don't think she's gonna share it to <laughs> 300,000 people. It's okay, Debbie. That's okay. Anyways, <clears throat> I'll show you a little. Well, it's something that you can. Retirement coming up and stuff. It's gonna be something you can work on and enjoy. It and I'm gonna enjoy it too. <laughs> I just happen to like this kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> He says when he retires, he's going to build us a little cabin, too. Uh, back, really, back in the woods. I'm talking about a little cabin. I'm seriously thinking if, if my health holds good, <laughs> and it may take me five years to build it, I don't know. So, we're going to be busy. But I, I kind of got that on my mind. I kind of want to uh, cut my own timber if I can find enough without doing, you know, I don't want to cut all my wood up. If I can find the right kind of stuff. And I may cut some somewhere and bring it in, too. I don't know. But it needs to season. It needs to be cut in the fall of the year when the sap's up. I mean, down. And it needs to season. Anyway, it's a long process, but... Uh, well, when you retire, we'll talk about it again. We'll talk about it. If I get to retire. <laughs> you will. So y'all fry you up some squirrel? If you can. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't do that, make you some... Biscuits and some water gravy. It's all good. And it's if you very can, cheap. Uh, boy, it's good. That's, well, that meal's good with chicken, too, that fried chicken. Oh, yeah. That water gravy's really good if you got some meat giblets that you can put in there with it. That, that, that makes it really good. But you can always be sustainable. You can always feed your family. Um, there's just there's ways to do it. It may not be steak and baked potato, but it'll fill your bellies. And we're not trying to scare nobody. No. We just want you to be prepared. Want this you is to... the way we've had to do, you know, most of our life. I mean, this is the way we've ate. Raising, you know, Four we kids. were raised and then raising our own. So, 
you know, times we've had hard times. There have been times that I, I've told this story a hundred times, but I I went out and killed a chicken so we had something to eat for supper. So, you know, it's so a, many people's been through it. So, been a lot of people through it, and there's a lot of wise people that's been through more than I had been yes, through. Yes, there's people that's been through a lot more, and we had to remember that. Um, we don't, me and Mr. Brown don't don't worry. We just make sure that we're taken care. Best we can. Best we can. And, and the good Lord take care of and us. And then the good Lord take care of us. So with that being said, y'all have a really uh, a really good weekend. And um, I think there's been some bad storms up north of us. I know there have been some in Yellowstone really bad. Yes, yeah, so we have to really think if anybody's been affected by that and... Uh, I mean, there's there's so many people fighting so many battles, so we got to think of everybody and pray for everybody and everything that's going on, and we've always done that, though. And uh, so best... Don't get down in the dumps. I know everything's high. It costs so much. It's unreal. I, I shake my head when I pay for stuff now. and. Uh, but, you know, when me and you... I'm thinking after, you know, we got married in 1980. I October know the 24th, 1980. Okay, we got married in 1980. We had our first child in 82. By the time I was 26 years old, we had four children. We said, that's enough. But, you said it was enough. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> there was never a time that Danny didn't work two or three jobs and... Uh, and times were still hard because in our area especially wages were not very high and mm -hmm. most of the men in our area a lot of them had to work off either on the tow boats or trucking or something if you yeah. to raise a family where the mama didn't have to go out and work um, I did um, I did go out and work um, in fact I worked nights when Brittany was born and Danny would work during the day and then take care of two kids when he come in till I come in about midnight or one o'clock in the morning but uh it was still hard times but we always 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 was able to make it never yeah and we never done without really. never done without nothing we might get behind on something <laughs> or just the only thing we could have was water gravy but we always made there it. was weeks we wondered if we was going to get enough money to pay the electric bill. Sometimes I wondered about, you know, buying diapers for the babies, but it always comes And you through. actually use some cloth diapers. I use cloth diapers. I wouldn't. <laughs> that was a job by itself. But anyways, I know a lot of y'all have had these struggles too. Y'all know exactly where we're coming from. So. Today we're blessed. Very, it's just, we're blessed. We're blessed. Everybody, you know, so. People are struggling and things and. Turn to the good Lord and keep your, keep your eyes head to the, up. Yes. So with that being said, we thank y'all for watching and staying this long with us. But sometimes we just like they'll, to sit down and talk all, to you. They're going to spend all weekend watching this. <laughs> you think? Probably. <laughs> but, I mean, it's going to take so much time. That's okay. If they don't want to watch it all the way, they can shut it off. <clears throat> they might just want to watch you cook squirrel. They might have. <laughs> but that's okay, too. But we'll see y'all in a few days. Don't know what we'll be doing. But we'll be doing something. We'll be doing something because there's always something going on around here, ain't there? Always. Always. Always something going on. So, bye everybody. I'm going to finish eating my gravy. I'm going to go get me another biscuit. Okay. I need some jelly. Yeah, that marmalade's good.